You're listening to Arrival audio recorded live at Arrival Orlando 2019 and distributed here by Tourpreneur. Experiences, the once fledgling tours and activities initiative of the online accommodation giant Airbnb is growing up fast. Ricardo Ulivi, head of North America operations of Airbnb Experiences, answers on stage the biggest operator questions. Disruptive companies, Airbnb has big plans for the best part of travel. Here to share with us what's next is the head of Americas for Airbnb Experiences, Ricardo Ulivi. Ricardo, Douglas. welcome. How are you? Good, good. How are you? Good. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Thanks for coming out. It's pretty early. Appreciate that. That's not that early. Yeah, I guess it's fair. <laughs> so look, you were, you were here uh, last year, and I, and I remember, I actually remember the launch of Airbnb experiences, yep. 2016, I think November 2016, and you launched with 500 experiences. In 12 cities. In 12 cities. Yep. In 12 cities. So can you give us you know, an update of yeah. where we're now? Yeah. Sorry. Um, so in 2016, we launched in 12 cities, about 500 experiences. Um, to date, we're in over 1,000 cities globally. And we have over 40,000 experiences bookable on the platform today. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And how do you, so, when you, you're, so in three years, it's, you're growing from almost nothing to you know, quite, quite something. How, so how do, you, I mean, how do you do that? How do you maintain kind of quality standards when you're growing so quickly? Yeah, so quality is our number one differentiator. It's something that we really focus on. So we haven't, ex we haven't decided to expand as fast as you know, we probably could have because we did want to maintain that level of quality. And so to date, about 93% of our experiences have five stars. And so quality, again, is our number one differentiator. It's what we really pride ourselves on. You have to apply to be an actual experience host on the platform. I think to date, we've had over 100,000 applications. Um, so again, quality is what we are really most focused on today and, and what we're and excited about. And have you kicked people off the platform if their reviews don't perform? We do. So we do have a policy where if you are not maintaining a minimum quality bar, um, we do remove you from the platform. And so again, that's just to protect the community, to protect uh, uh, the brand. So something that we're um, you know, it's something that we, we let all of our hosts know. Um, but again, it's very few because a lot of our hosts are maintaining that level of quality that we are really excited about. So now there was uh, some news that came out this morning, which um, was, was pretty interesting. So uh, Airbnb has led a Series C investment in tickets. So tickets is an online travel agency and, and technology company focused on the world of ticketed attractions. So I, I found this very interesting because you know, my impression of Airbnb experiences is, you know, like, oh, learn how to go, you know, I don't know, um, uh, experience like how to make cheese in some far off arrondissement in, in Paris or how to make hats or, uh -huh. you know, or something, you know, something like that. So I never saw you like getting into this kind of classic conventional tourism and ticketed attractions. So can you tell us a bit about, you know, the decision for, for, the, for leading that round? Yeah, I mean, look, uh this is really a testament to all of you. We know that this is a massive space. It's a growing space. Um, we're still very new. If I can do a show of hands, how many of you have been in this space for more than five years? Okay, what about more than 10 years? Okay, so we've been in here for about three. So we're still so new here. And when we met with, with Luke and the, the tickets team, what we were most inspired by was, one, the size of the market, right? We know, I mean, look at, this, look at the attendees here, right? You've got over 1,000 people here to, to come to this conference. So it's a big market. So we're excited about that. Second, the product is really awesome, right? You get tickets sent directly to your phone. Um, easy access is convenient. And third, it was the team, right? I'm not sure if the tickets team is here. I actually met with them last year at Arrival. Um, I'm not sure if you guys remember, but they were wearing these amazing green jumpsuits. It caught my eye from the, from the get-go. So again, the team is really, uh, really, really, really awesome. And so that Signal was... to folks who are looking for uh, investors, it matters what you wear, <laughs> okay? No, it was just, uh, you know, like their culture, right, was, was something that we were really inspired by and really loved. They're very direct, very straightforward. Um, so for us, it was, right, the product, the market, and then the people. So it was a no-brainer. So, uh, so, but then just... But then what about kind of getting into that space? I mean, if I go on to Airbnb today, I can't purchase Walt Disney World tickets or Universal yeah, tickets. I can't get a ticket to the Eiffel Tower. So uh, is that, are you, are you, does that mean you're kind of stepping into this space? And kind of, I mean, the company and some of the executives have always, I mean, kind of derided 
you know, mass tourism, right? So, um, look, we know it's a growing space. We're really excited about it. Again, I mean, look at the attendees you've got here. This is uh, an incredible space. We're not doing any direct integrations today. It's really just for us to keep our, no uh, keep our, our, our ears to the street. Yeah. Right? We've led investments in the wing, which is the women's uh, um, uh, work, works, working stations. Uh, Resi, we read, led an investment last year. So we're always just keeping our ears to the street and seeing, you know. There's also you led on. an investment in is it Atlas Obscura, which is Atlas Obscura as well, yeah. exactly. Um, so again, we're always looking to stay innovative, keep keep moving forward, and then with the prog like tickets, with that space, again, we're not doing anything with it today, but we know that there's an opportunity there potentially down the line. So we want to at least just. Be so there. because I have seen, you know, I so I, I go to your website every now and again. Thank you. Um, uh, and I. I, I so I'm trying to track and see like how is the product evolving. Hey, could we put the slides up on, on the screen? There's, there's one screenshot that I wanted to share. It really caught my eye, and I wanted to ask you about it. So this is, looks like it, so it says must visit landmarks. Uh, within, and if I look at New York here, we're talking about Central Park, the Brooklyn Bridge, Times Square. So this is, I mean, this is hardcore, you know, mass tourism stuff. I mean, this is what everyone does. It kind of caught my eye. This is not what I think of. With well, just to be clear, it's not what everyone's doing, right? Our, our experiences are, are hosted by folks who have certain levels of expertise and connection. So if you look at Central Park, right, there may be things like you can go do a picnic in the park. You can maybe go through a run through the park. So it, it's a way to visit these landmarks through a different perspective. Um, and again, this is just a design element. These experiences have been on the platform for, for a while. Um, so there's nothing really that new here other than, hey, let's just try and merchandise this a little differently today. But do you think in the future, like could you imagine a future where Airbnb is actually, okay, I am selling a, I'm selling a, um, a hop on hop off tour, or I am bus tour, or I am, I am selling a ticket to the Empire State Building? It's not on the roadmap today. Um, however, right, when I started Airbnb five years ago, hotels were sort of no-goes. And then I'm not sure if many of you guys heard, last year we bought a hotel company, a hotel tonight. Mm. So while this is not on the roadmap today, you know, I think uh, it's something that we have to keep an, keep an eye on. And so there's no plans or any integrations today. There's no plans to do any sort of ticketing yet. Um, but again, going back to the market, it's, it's a sizable market. It's a great team and a great product. So for us, it was a no-brainer to invest. So I want to look at, there's a couple of other screenshots I want to look at really quick, uh, just to get a sense of like the product diversity. Uh, so what was interesting to me here, so this is Orlando. And so the first one there on the left is a clear kayak tour through Rock Springs. So I looked at this. So this is actually Justin Buzzy's company, Get Up and Go Kayaking. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a, a professional tour operator. Mm -hmm. um, uh, here, so you are allowing professional tour companies on the platform as well as individuals. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, even last night I did an experience here in Orlando. It was a uh, an LED light stand-up paddleboarding experience on one of the lakes. Again, it's it's run by a company. However, I don't ever talk about oh this company was great. What I really focus on was the host. Right? I can tell you last night on the experience that I did, my host's name was Richard. We had this really deep connection about why he started the company. Uh, it's he and his wife who just wanted to spend more time on the water together. So I said, why don't we just try and turn our passion into a business? So again, we don't have any issues with, with operators. Um, some operators are some of the highest quality hosts that we've got on the platform. But it's really about, um, is the host providing that level of connection um, and access that we're really after? So but one thing that I know is important for many operators is they're also trying to build a brand. And when they work through kind of a, a reseller, a third-party platform, so this is, this is not, we don't see get up and go kayaking there. This is a clear kayak tour. So can, what, why don't you kind of put the brand front and center? Well, if you were to click into this particular example, you'll see that they do actually mer market their, their company in the, in the about the host section. Mm -hmm. So the host will say, you know, my name is Justin, I started this company, and so they are able to promote the company. But again, we really want to foster that connection between the guest and the host. That's where we really find the most transformational experiences. If you read a lot of our reviews, you'll notice it's never about the company, or it's never it was a great experience, it was fun. It's always Richard was a great host, Richard really made me feel like I belonged. So it's really about that people-to-people -people connection that we're really excited about and what we're focused on. You know, just one of the things that I, I, has always struck me about Airbnb is, so if I rent a home on any other website, okay, I'm, I'm getting a vacation rental, I'm renting a home. But when somebody rents a home on Airbnb, they say, oh, I'm getting an Airbnb. Can you, how does that, 
how does that happen? Like, can you share a little bit of you know the cultural kind of ethos? Like, how do you you know you create kind of Airbnb as almost like a part of the the lexicon? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I don't have an answer, right? It's one of those cultural phenomenons now. We, we have a running joke where we have a Slack channel where whenever we hear like a cultural reference to Airbnb in, in media and TV, we'll like share funny clips about it. But again, like I don't think there's a recipe, right? I mean, if there were, everyone here would say, okay, I have to do X, Y, and Z and I'm going to have this big global super brand. I think there were just a lot of macro, macro factors that were happening globally, culturally. The brand, I think we've always placed an emphasis on things like, um, you know, diversity or core values. So, I think there was just a lot of really cool tailwinds that sort of merged together at once, and it developed into this, this amazing global brand. Now, so one other issue that, uh, for professional operators that I know I've, I've heard from many operators about, it's a challenge working with Airbnb is, so they have, especially larger companies, they have multiple guides, and, and they're always, it's always a challenge, right? Logistics yeah. of managing tours and departures and which guide is on what, whereas your focus at Airbnb is, you're going to have this experience with this host, with this individual, and that's been a, a, like a challenge. Uh, so how, what, what can you share with operators about, about that today? Yeah, look, again, I just want to make sure it's very clear that like, we're still so new in this space, right? We are trying to get better every month. Are there any hosts here in the audience on Airbnb? Cool, great. This is exciting to see. So you know, every month, every six months, we're releasing new features for our hosts. For example, in the past, to add availability, you had to click on every date individually. Hmm. Well, when I mean, you want to add availability six months in the future, that's quite cumbersome. So we've rolled out new tools that allow you to manage your calendar more effectively. And so this concept of multiple hosts, right? again, this is something that we didn't anticipate. And now we're seeing, OK, we're learning from the industry. Look, to build a successful business, you can't have uh, Douglas hosting it every single time. So nothing to share today, but we do know that that is an opportunity for us to get better. And so while we're exploring that and a number of, number of other initiatives to improve the product, um, it's feedback that we're hearing, we're collecting, and we're just now prioritizing what we build and when. So I just one more product I wanted to ask you about. This is just purely for, out of my own curiosity. So fourth from the left, what is inappropriate cross-stitch? Do you like what you hear on this podcast? If so, join us at an upcoming Arrival event to hear from the brightest minds in travel, get hands-on learning to help advance your tour, activity, or attraction business, and partake in the best networking ever. Head to ArrivalEvent.com to register and to learn more. You pulled it up, so I don't know. I haven't been on that experience yet, but it's got all five-star reviews. Um, looks pretty fun. Uh, okay. Would you go on that one, Douglas? Um, I think I'm the one who's supposed to be asking the questions here, right? <laughs> okay, great. No, super. So, um, uh, so you work with, with operators. How, if I'm an operator, um, how do I, how, how do I be effective? Like what's, you know, it's, it's kind of like, you know, how do I get to the top of the sort order? How do I get, you know, how do I make sure that I'm delivering an experience yeah. that's going to be successful? on Airbnb, and should I think about how I position my product on Airbnb differently from, okay, like when I'm setting my product up on another yeah, um, I mean, travel agency? I think we talked about this a little bit last year, but two things. One, if you're offering the highest quality experience, that's the number one thing you can do. We, at, at Airbnb, we talk about your zones of influence. Your zone one are things that you can completely control. Zone two are things that you can maybe influence a little bit. Zone three are things that are like outside your control. For these experiences, your zone one is, are you offering that world-class experience? Are you taking into account your guests? Are you meeting their expectations? So that's the first thing, is just offering an incredible experience to all your guests. The second thing, right, we encourage folks to experiment. Right? With the analogy that we use is your profile is like a storefront. You've got your cover photo, you've got your title, you've got your price. If you don't feel like you're getting enough traction with what you've got, Try experimenting. You know, you can maybe try um, dropping your price a little bit. Maybe try adding a new profile photo that gives a better sense of what it is that you're doing. Maybe try experimenting with the title. So again, it's really like a work in progress. And so uh, we encourage all of our hosts to experiment with ways to merchandise their experience, and then on the back end, really focus at really focus on that five star experience. So I do want to open up the, the floor to questions uh, as well. I also had some questions that came in from, uh, from operators and attendees in advance. Uh, but, and there's one actually related to what you just said, which is pricing. So we had a question 
uh, about kind of what is, like, how should operators think about, you know, pricing? Do you provide any kind of recommendation tools, or how should they, what, you know, and what guidance would you give generally? Look, you guys are the experts, right? I, I can't come in and tell, um, you know, for example, yesterday I was meeting with uh, a, a good friend of mine named Renato, who's from, he's here from Brazil, actually. He works um, on the experiences business. You know, we, we, he knows the business better than I do, right? I can't tell him or her what to price their experience. It's really about value. If it's a $200 experience, that's great, right? If you're offering $200 worth of, of value. If it's a walking tour through downtown Orlando and it's priced at $200, there's probably not a whole lot of value there. However, if it's an uh, experience where you're taking a Jeep into the desert or you're taking a boat on, in Orlando, like, there's more value there, right? So pricing is, is something that I can't really, or we, my team can't tell hosts what to price. But if there's value there, you know, I think that's the, the number one thing to think about. And we don't offer tips today. I'm not sure, are any of you home hosts on Airbnb? Great, I see a, hand over, a few hands over there. So we do offer like, uh, essentially um, pricing tools or, or uh, custom pricing for homes. Now again, I'm not saying we're doing that for experiences, but like you can see as this business evolves, as we get better, as we take more feedback from the community, right, the, op the opportunities are, are limitless and for us to improve. Okay, so I have a few questions that I want to get through that have come in from operators. So licensing and regulation, there's some uh, cities which actually require licensing. Yep. So for example, I think you know, Vienna, you know, Rome and different cities. What is your approach there? Are you checking kind of regulations? How do you manage that? Yeah, so to your point, right, a lot of cities will have, if you're taking a uh, guest to a, uh, a, a, a landmark or a place of interest and describing the history of that place, you need a license um, to be a tour guide. So yeah, we do have in the sign-up flow, if you are taking folks to, let's say, the Louvre or the Coliseum, you do need to self-attest that you do have a license for your experience. And then if it's, a more, uh, uh, if it's more high risk in terms of you're operating a vehicle, operating a boat, we have a third party that we use to verify all of the correct licenses to make sure that if you're driving a boat with 15 people, hey, you better have a boating license. And so we do have a third party that verifies all that for us as well. Uh, so uh, uh, exclusivity, my understanding in the past you have told operators this has to be an exclusive Airbnb experience, so we don't want Airbnb customers mingling with TripAdvisor customers or Expedia customers mm -hmm. or direct booking customers. Uh, is that still? Uh, yeah, look, still it's, it's, it's more on the instance, right? We, you can offer an experience or a tour on multiple platforms, right? Like, I totally understand that you have to look out for your bottom line. Um, but what we don't want is if you have an, uh, an instance from 12 to 2, let's say, that's the one that we want to be exclusive to Airbnb. But you can offer one from three to five on any other platform if you'd like. But that's what we are looking for in terms of exclusivity. So, and then kind of around that too, the related issue that came in is, is around cancellations. <laughs> Where basically, you, you know, your policy is don't cancel <laughs> to operators, right? So now if I say I'm running a food tour and I want to list my experience, I've got to contract you know, my suppliers in advance. And if I've only got one or two people and suddenly I'm losing money on that, on that tour, I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's a, you know, a real challenge uh, for, for my business. So what, what would you say to, to operators around that? Yeah, look, I, I, we hear that a lot, right? It's something that we're looking at. Um, it's, a, it's a policy that we had in place early on. Same with homes as well. But now we're looking at um, what are the ramifications of, 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 of changing that policy. But today, I totally hear you. It is, it is tough. But that's why things like pricing is, are so competitive because you don't want to be in the hole. Um, but, you know, we, um, put yourself in a guest perspective. I think we talked about this last year as well. You're coming to Orlando from Tokyo for the first time. You're going to go on this amazing experience that you built your whole trip around, and the host cancels on you. And now you're stuck. So it's, 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 a, it's a fine balance and something that we hear a lot from the community. And again, that's just something that we're um, continuing to learn from. And there's nothing to share today, but there could yeah. be some updates in the near future. How, how do you just, you know, because this is, I think, a challenge that, you know, all, all of the platforms, like all of the online travel agencies have to contend with, where they see there's things that consumers want, like consumers want to be able to book last minute. You know, yeah. they, want, they want flexibility. Um, but then there, that creates challenges on the operator side and kind of the fulfillment side. I'm, I'm sure lots of other issues. Like just how do you, what's the process within Airbnb for thinking about kind of, kind of balancing, you know, obviously you want, you know, you want to, 
grow bookings and, and serve customers and deliver bookings to your, to your operators, but at the same time, you need to have a, a model that works for operators. So just, what's, your, what's the thought process? How do you work through some of those difficult decisions? Look, uh, ultimately, what we've always focused on is, is listening to our community, right? That's kind of how experiences started. Our community, was, our community of home hosts was telling us, hey, we're already taking a lot of our guests to go to, um, you know, the Louvre or the Orsay in Paris. Why don't you guys offer an experience or allow me to monetize my time taking folks to these places? So, again, we were really always trying to gather as much feedback from our community. And so that's why I encourage all of you to, to give us as much feedback as possible because we are still so new at this, so we are constantly improving and iterating on the product to make it easier for, um, for everyone to belong, which is our mission. We have a question from the audience. Hi, my, na my name is Lauren Shannon. I'm from Arigato Japan Food Tours. Oh, hi, Lauren. And, hi. Um, just going back to talking about hosts versus uh, operators, hosts not being able to do every tour, have you ever thought about promoting teams? Because I know all of us have guides that work for us that we really love, and we'd be more than happy to create a team for an Airbnb experience where you can promote those four or five great guides to help with your product. Yeah, I think that's a great, great point. Um, and so today, even if you look at many of our experiences where there are multiple guides, you know, we just ask that they are listed. So we, we kind of do have like a, a, an indirect way of listing out your team. But I totally agree with you, Shannon, that having a way on the back end to essentially, um, you know, uh, make sure that, you know, Douglas is, is, is who he says, um, that's something that we're definitely thinking about. Um, you know, in our homes business, we introduced a tool a few years ago called co-hosting. And so while that's not really that transferable to experiences today, again, just thinking ahead, right? Like there are these things that we can do on the platform to make it easier for um, operators who've got multiple guides. Um, you have just uh, one quick, I know we have an audience question, but one quick one. So it, it, on the homes feature, you have a request to book option as well as like a book, you know, kind of instant book option. Yep. How come you don't offer the request to book option for experiences? So we do, have a, we do have a request to book where if you want to request for a private instance or for a group, when you're going through the flow, there is a button okay. that says request a private group. So we do offer that. Um, a host has to opt into it. But if you were to go through the product, you could see okay. um, when you click on the date, there is a little link that says, do you want to request to book this as like a private instance or um, for yourself okay. or for a group? Okay. Yeah. We have a question. Hi there, it's Paul Melhuis from uh, Tours by Locals. Uh, you said that 93% uh, of your tours or your experiences are rated uh, five star, which is a great metric, but we, our thesis is that uh, people rate things if they're really bad or if they're really good. So, and if they're just, eh, okay, they won't bother. Uh, so a key metric for us is the percentage of tours that are rated. Mm. What, what percentage of experiences are rated? So I don't know off the top of my head. Um, it is high, which is good. But again, you know, I think, Douglas, you shared a stat that 50% of, 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 uh, of experienced goers were not that satisfied. So while I, I don't know the exact number for the review rate, um, having that number be north of 90% for us, and that is encouraging. Again, I don't think it's great. We've solved it. We are the, the best. No, like there's always ways to improve and get better. Um, but I, I don't know the exact number. I can get back to you on what the, the review rate is, but it is high. I mean, I, I get a notification the minute their experience is done to leave a review. So we are encouraging guests to leave, um, to leave reviews. Um, so I, I, don't, I don't have the exact number, but um, I'm happy to follow up with you if you like. We have one more question from the audience. Hi, good morning. Anquanet Gaspard here for Virgin Island Food Tours. So I'm based in St. Croix in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Um, one of the challenges that we've had is after Hurricanes Irma and Maria in 2017, a lot of our accommodations were eliminated because they were destroyed. So that drove a lot of visitors to the islands to Airbnb, which is a great thing. But the disconnect is that we don't have experiences available in the Virgin Islands, which is a U.S. territory, or Puerto Rico. So how do you we go about whether contacting Airbnb experiences because yeah. there are a lot of opportunities for experiences to be listed on Airbnb, but we don't have the opportunity to do so, so we're missing the mark with offering that to a lot of the people that come to our territories. Yeah, that's a great question. And so, like I said, we're in over a thousand cities. There are still some places that we could c continue to expand in. Um, we do have experiences in Puerto Rico. I just want to clarify that. We actually just had a, a big community event there recently. 
Um, I, I think, did you send me a message on the, the app <laughs> yesterday? I actually forwarded it to the country manager for the Caribbean. And I Good. think if you look today, you can now submit experiences in the, in the island. So uh, I appreciate you calling that out. And yeah, it's something that we're definitely exploring right now. Well, that's all the time we have. Ladies and gentlemen, Ricardo Oluvi. Thank you, Douglas. Appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. Are you interested in being a part of the arrival community of tours, activities, attractions, events, and experiences? Then join us at one of our events in the U.S., Europe, or Asia Pacific. Head to arrivalevent.com to learn more.